One of the most recognisable and identifiable icons or symbols or images of the Freemasonic presence is the black and white checkerboard floor or tiles. Within masonry, this is known as the Masonic pavement. There's a lot of confusion out there regarding what the pavement or the checkerboard floor of the Freemasons lodges actually mean. I'm going to read from their own documents in order to tell you how Freemasons consider and view the Masonic checkerboard of their own lodges. function is to unite opposites. The black and white square represents the duality apparent in the cosmos. As above, so below. Positive, negative. Male, female. The opposing poles of a magnet, for example. The northern and southern hemisphere of the globe of the earth, and so on. While the mason is in one square, he is told to consider its relationship to another square. A very occultic idea based primarily on the concept of one pole being the unified reflection or representation of the other pole. The white square representing the god of the Freemasons, Lucifer, is casting the darkest shadow in order to dispel ignorance and create enlightenment. The Masonic pavement itself, or the checkered floor, has black and white squares like a chessboard. In most lodges, they are measured one foot by one foot in terms of square size. And this is where the phrase, a square guy, or a square deal, used in the American vernacular comes from. They are directly derived from American Freemasonic lodges where membership of Freemasonic organizations was higher than just about anywhere else on the planet. And therefore, Masonic phraseology entered into the common tongue. You can see these floors in the center of purpose-built lodges which have a permanent building which the Freemasons occupy. On approaching the central area of the Freemasonic chamber, the checkered board functions as a kind of consciousness trigger in order to have the Freemason consider the duality and polar opposites of any concept or idea or mystery that is about to be presented to them. Apprentices are generally asked to study the subject. This will include meditation on black and white squares to see where their stream of consciousness and their cognitive wanderings take them. Masonic texts from the 1700s commonly refer to the mosaic pavement on the Masonic floor as being the Moses pavement, named after the father of the state of Israel. Another term that's used commonly within the Scottish Rite is the Lodge's marvellous floor. In fact, the term marvellous, when it's used to denote a building or a structure, is very commonly used within Freemasonry. 
especially in Irish Freemasons, the term marvellous is used as a code word to denote secret gathering places or secretive gathering ideas and concepts which Freemasons are to pay attention to. In 1730, the guidebook by Pritchard, the Masonry Dissect, outlined that the Masonic Square is looked upon to be both the floor of the lodge itself and the paving stones of the temple. The temple being the incorporeal temple which is outside this space-time reality. When a Freemason of the 33rd degree is entering upon a ritual inside a corporeal earthly lodge, the 33rd degree Grand Master is considered to be performing the rite on the checkered board of the great temple outside this space-time reality and hence the connection to Moses and the first temple of Jerusalem. This idea presents something of a conspiratorial, if not a sinister motive behind its concept, in that it has been speculated that any plans, anything illegal, anything immoral, anything outside respectable standard or approved behavior of society, which is partaken upon in the temple of the mind by the 33rd degree Freemason, while they are outside this corporeal reality, is not subject to the laws and the morals of this reality. Therefore, what takes place in the non-material temple of the heart and the mind has no bearing on the solid temple of the material world. This has led to speculation that this allows Freemasonic Grandmasters to break the law and behave inappropriately and therefore not be subject to the laws, the morals and the dogmas of the society which they are a part of. This has also led further to the conspiratorial ideas of why so many police officers and in particular high-ranking members of the police force have such high membership as well as the judiciary among Freemasonic lodges. In Irish Freemasonic texts it is claimed that the tiling on the floor is the same floor in terms of design as was placed below the head rabbi's temple of Jerusalem built by Solomon. Outside Irish and some American lodges this idea has been contested in the belief that they do not have a Hebrew or Semitic origin. This leads to a wider schism within Freemasonry and a very strange paradox within Irish Freemasonry in that inside Ireland Freemasonic orders generally associate themselves towards Solomon's Temple in Jerusalem. Several American and English lodges specifically denote that the origin of all Freemasonry is the Druids of the Celtic world. So we have a very strange situation where Irish lodges are denying their own heritage, which suggests that these Irish lodges are actually not set up in Irish interests and that the true Irish Freemasons departed at the time of the flight of the Earls to Spain, France and the Americas. There was at least one lodge in Ireland specifically mentioned by the great American philosopher and political writer Thomas Paine that was directly founded by Druids hiding from Christians. But the name and the origin and the location of this specific Druidic lodge in Ireland has been lost. The earliest esoteric mention and use of the checkered board tile goes back to the first century BC in Rome. At the time, the checkerboard was used for mosaics decorating natural, and this is very important, also artificial caves. Once again we see this idea 
of escapism from this reality, the transference of the earthly and mortal realms into caves, into lodges, into sacred spaces, magic squares, magic circles, outside the prevailing reality. And what taking place inside these locations is very different in experience and in philosophical, moral, legal, and behavioral frameworks than what takes place outside of these sacred spaces. The Roman idea almost certainly came from the portal idea or the portal chamber, portal dolmen, portal cairn of the Neolithic, where checkerboard hatch marks can even be seen decorating some of the 5,000 year old portal stats, which are the main stones holding up the capstones of these ancient temples, suggesting we are dealing with an extremely long, lengthy culture that goes right back to the dawn of intelligent or enlightened man 6,000 years ago, according to the Masonic calendar. The mosaic was also used in the first century BC in Rome to decorate the bottom of fountains dedicated to the god Apollo, who remains a powerful symbol within Freemasonry to this day. The Roman decorations were known as the Museum Opus, which was abbreviated later under Byzantine rule to the Museum. This is where the word mosaic comes directly from, and according to the Freemasons' own documents, should not be confused with Moses. The two terms have completely different meanings. Before the establishment of permanent Freemasonic lodges, and also used in temporary lodges for Freemasonic gatherings, a tracing board would be used to draw on the floor with white chalk to denote both the checkerboard floor and certain symbols which would be used during a specific rite. In modern times, this tracing board is now replaced with a painted canvas which is rolled out onto the floor and is known as the camper or the bouvac. The rolled up canvas shows all the Masonic objects in the temple. The two pillars topped with pomegranates framing a piece of rough stone called ashlar. A square stone with a point, the moon and the sun, a square and a compass, a plumb line, a gavel and a chisel, and the trestle board. All the symbols are contained within a magic circle denoted by a knotted rope similar to the Celtic interlaced knotted border. Again, the knots of the rope and the interlacing rope itself represents the combination and the resolution of duality or dual opposites with the central area where the knot passes over the oval shapes between each loop representing the all-seeing eye as a form of protection or what is known as apotropathic magic, the use of an eye or an oval or a circle to ward off evil. There are several types of tracing boards. The one I have just described is the apprentice tracing board. The other degrees of tracing boards belonging to masters are closely guarded secrets and held generally within the stewardship of a particular lodge. Another aspect of the Masonic pavement is its relationship 
to the magic square known as the trestle board. The trestle board shows symbols which are made up of letters of the Masonic alphabet, forming ciphers and keys. The arrangement as well as the location and relationship of one letter to another within each square as well as being if this letter or number appears within a specific black or white square has a very powerful meaning within the Masonic Lodge particularly among the Grand Masters who use these to initially train apprentices but also to create secret communications amongst one another in the form of a cipher. Officially Freemasonic Lodges put out the idea that these are a kind of a game or a riddle played and are used only for decorative purposes. However, the specific lettering, numbering and Masonic writing with inside these squares and how they relate to the checkerboard floor bears a remarkable resemblance to certain systems of magical writing such as Enochian. If you would like more information on the origins and the antiquarian history behind the topics and ideas discussed in these series of cult films, you can check out a copy of my book The Druid Code, which is available at the link below.